with an area of 241,038 square kilometers. 18% of Uganda's land mass is covered by large bodies of water, including fresh water, which are home to a variety of fish species. Uganda and East Africa's fishing industry plays a vital role in ensuring food security and contributing to economic export growth. There are 1.2 million people involved in the capture of fish. 5,000 individuals engaged in industrial processing of fish, 5.5 million livelihoods of people involved in the sector, 12% contribution to the agriculture sector, 3% national GDP of Uganda. Over 75% of the fish produced in Uganda is consumed within the country, which contributes a lot to the food security in this country. In 2022, for an example, uh, Lake Victoria contributed 1% of the world fisheries, which uh, is an enormous amount in terms of tonnage, uh, looking into a single lake and comparing it to the oceans, uh, which contribute as well. Some of the achievements emerging out of the Responsible Fisheries Business Chains project include increased stakeholder engagement, government or non-governmental actors, provided business development training to 2,800 SMEs, reduction of illegalities on the lake, increase of mature and right-sized fish stocks, registered and licensed over 30,000 boats, created a fisheries marketing tool known as Abavubi App. In collaboration, the Responsible Fisheries Business Chains Project and the Federation of Fisheries Organization of Uganda developed and adopted the Abafubi app. When I'm doing my business, I use Abafubi app mostly because it's very convenient for me. When I want to get my orders, I just go to Abafubi app and open up. That is Abafubi app. If I want to, 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 to fulfill the market, I go to marketplace because they have marketplace, you have a safety, you have accounting, you have fishing. Now I want to market my, my products. Then I go to marketplace to see if I have the orders. Yes, I have the orders today. And uh, my order now, my order today is about Nairo patch in Puta. Eh? So these are the types of Nairo patch he wants. Today he wants 100 kilograms of Nairo patch. Uh, and this is the type I'm going to, to, to provide to him. Once he, sell, he sends the money, I'll be having to send him, send him the fish. This is the, the, the type of fish he wants. Mm. Then I go back to... Yesterday he took this type, but today he wants the other one. So today I want to check my money, my mobile money if he has put the money there. This is where I'm going. Okay, please. The order is as, as usual, 500 big, 200 small, eh? How about medium? Okay, but deposit the money as soon as possible. Okay, please. Contributing to food security, more fish available in Uganda and East Africa, more jobs and incomes, to people in fisheries sector. We target groups under the categories such as the boat owners, the fish traders, the fish byproduct processors and the processors who are mostly made up of women uh, because there's a challenge that came up where they did not see their businesses quite as something that they can sustainably do but more of income generating activities. So the, the BDS training comes on board to not only do a mindset change but also to ensure that these businesses can be done in a profitable manner and to improve the overall performance of the fisheries value chain. While others are trained in FAO's voluntary guidelines for arts and fisheries. This includes energy efficient smokehouses installed at Katosi, Bugula, Bulebi, Mumunza and Bugoye landing sites on Lake Victoria and among others to ensure fish product quality.
The target activities and achievements have included organization and implementation of training and advisory services on business development services with special consideration of women. The Responsible Fisheries Business Chains Project targets at Zano fishers, processors and traders as well as small and medium-sized enterprises in the fisheries sector. We are taught that we should change our minds of drying mukene. So we are given eight drying tanks. So I want to take this opportunity to thank the IZ for that. Not only that, we benefit the lot. The seeding machine, the fishing nets, there were nine so far. We changed our standards of living at home, the income, we are now earning a lot than before. The field of action, more fish, more income, aims at establishing the prerequisites for value addition to fish of sustainable and resource-conserving Nile patch fishery and more. Uh, we are training them, one, on hygiene to ensure that the fish products that we have are of good quality and can access the market. And then we train them on fish handling. How do you handle the fish? to ensure that you maintain the quality and the freshness of the fish. And then we train them on the different fish processing techniques. The project supported the Uganda National Women in Fisheries Consultative Workshop to develop the Constitution, an action plan that facilitates the establishment of the network for women processors and traders in Uganda. And this is a fish innovation center that uh, has been supported by GIZ because GIZ gave us some work to train women and uh, in 15 districts in Uganda and cut us of that we were able to make some savings and uh, we have managed to, to have a home of our own. So this center is going to train people if you want to start a fish business, this is a place to go. The Responsible Fisheries Business Chains Project, together with its partners, has made a significant contribution to food security. More fish available, income generation, regulated fisheries and good fisheries management. The fisheries sector in Uganda and in East Africa has been revived a bit, you know. Actors talk to each other, things are happening, or the population sees that fish is coming out. It's recognized that fisheries contributes to food security. We do, the markets are full. The Nile perch, which at the beginning of this project was seen as, ah, it's exported. Now it's kind of a big part of the local market, of the local consumption. And these are things which all of us during the lifespan of this project have contributed. The status of co-management structures gaps and challenges and best options for effective implementing the revised co-management guidelines in Uganda have also been established. The collaborations and linkages with institutions and partners have been maintained and new ones acquired. First, like the co-management guidelines so that the stakeholders are all involved. Let the fishermen be involved, the fish traders be involved, the, 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 the policing agents be involved and the technical arms from the central government, then plus any civil society organization to be involved in this. Nakimo is Lake Joga Integrated Management Organization. It was set up by uh, districts that actually touch the lake and uh, the major aim was to, uh, to see how sustainably the lake resources could be utilized. GIZ has cleared 85% of our challenges. They have trained our people. They have even cleaned the whole of this lake choga. You can't believe. Choga is big. I'm taking off 17 districts. Before the GIZ project, we did not have a forum that brings all of us as the stakeholders to the, in the fishery sector in the country to work together to mainly plan, to exchange knowledge,
to share ideas, to, to really guide good uh, management and development of the fishery sector in, in, in the country. As the name says, multi stakeholder, the different stakeholders, and so in improving the sector's performance, effectiveness, we as UFCA we have gained a lot in the last three years uh, from the efforts of DIZ for people to generate those ideas, to generate information and so forth. So as an advocate organization, I know in the next two to three years we shall influence a lot of policies with what we have already got, the information we have got now, we have got that. So we are going to package this information and be able to, to be able to, um, to come up with advocacy strategies and campaigns and so forth. As the project goes, goes away, they, they had been supporting a number of key activities which on routinely give us, give us uh, uh, data like uh, hydroacoustics. And I think when the project is closing, we started selling it to partner states. The partner states should be able to take it up and be able to develop that so that it continuously uh, go in that direction and does not stop. Uh, we have what we are calling the electronic catch assessment survey. It's very easy. You have the software installed on a mobile phone. These days people understand these mobile solutions. Everyone is on a mobile phone, on a smartphone. And we are making such inroads uh, after the project has ended where you don't have the resources to, to actually conduct these surveys. Then you have the enumerator at a landing site who is collecting data on a daily and transmitting this data to uh, a central server and then the manager who can also visualize what is happening. GIZ Responsible Fisheries Business Chains Project, together with the Directorate of Fisheries Resources, National Fisheries Resources Research Institute, District Local Government and the local fish community identified, characterized, validated and mapped 87 potential fish breeding areas in nursery grounds or maternity wards for fish on Lake Victoria 43 and Choga 44. The fish breeding areas, we know these areas where they are and we have mapped them so we look forward to now having statutory instruments that can eventually have them gazetted and protected. <laughs> Illegal, undocumented and unregulated fishing practices, including previous use of unsafe and substandard boats, has been a concern. These challenges led uh, the government of Uganda the government of the Federal Republic of Germany, the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, uh, to come together and create or kind of put into being the Responsible Fisheries Business Change Project. Uh, the project is funded by the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. So that in 2016 this program started to address the aforementioned challenges. We have the boats which is on standard we are using the nets, which is on standard. We are paying license. We are licensing our boats, and we are advising our fishermen to wear the life jackets, uh, how they can handle fish after fishing. We have learned value addition on our fish. The project also facilitated the review of the standard operating procedures, SOPs, for self-checks in fish factories which were used for 444 inspections in 11 fish factories. They have done over 1,000 self-control checks where they monitor the quality of the fish that is brought to the factories for processing. They also monitor the sizes of those fish and this has been a regulatory tool to the sector in a way that the fishermen have to fish out the right size of the fish because they know their target customers are the factories and also at the factory level it helps them to process better fish which opens up a wider market for them for international export. Partners Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, Directorate of Fisheries Resources, MAIF, 
Uganda Fish Processors and Exporters Association, a Federation of Fisheries Organization of Uganda, Association of Fishers and Lake Users of Uganda, Katosi Women Development Trust, Uganda National Women Fish Organization, Lake Choga Integrated Management Organization, National Fisheries Resources Research Institute, Sustainable Fisheries Initiative, GIZ has supported the organizations or partners capacity strengthening. Our effort of uh, building their capacity to ensure that it, during implementation they don't deviate from those provisions. In terms of training and uh, keeping them with the knowledge and, and the skills has helped the partners to, to acquire that knowledge that is required in, in uh, requesting for funds from the list of grants other than GIZ and most of them have benefited from other international development partners using the information and the knowledge that they acquired during the implementation of our project. There has been strengthening of government actors as well as the private sector and civil society organizations for sustainable resource use. We have worked hand in hand. We have now our people around some of the sub-counties with the laptops and generators that support them in registration and licensing. So the aspect of licensing and the uh, registration has been supported majorly by GIZ. GIZ has been able to support us with the, the law. Uh, with all the facilitation they, they gave us, we now have a fisheries, new fisheries law 2023. We still want to appeal to them, please, we need instruments, we need you to work with us for us to get these instruments. Then two, we still need you to support us on aquaculture, majorly, in the east and northern. We need uh, support for fish farming for our youth, and then of course support for our artisan women, because women in fishing have supported their family a great deal, and uh, some of them were basically supported by uh, uh, GIZ. GIZ has supported me with the, uh, with the uh, fisheries days. I have had uh, already from the time I I came to this docket, I've had three big uh, fisheries days and GIZ has been in support of this. Uh, GIZ has been able to support us, sensitize the public about fishing and good fishing and sustainable uh, fishing, especially with our local fishermen who didn't know about uh, fisheries bringing money to the country, bringing money to their pockets, helping them to pay the fees of their children, and also economically, the country has been empowered. And we are second to coffee. So we, we want to appeal. Please continue supporting us.